Um, the um, state has told us that's how it's going to be done. Now in Greater Park, we're lucky in that um, the school board was able to um, enter into an agreement with the teachers that will expire in 2015. So until then, we have that much time to get that plan together, but there, that's coming. We don't have a choice. <coughs> state mandated, I agree. Yeah. It's, it's not an option for us. Anybody else? It's, yeah, state mandated. Uh, Greater Clark, we, they do have a teacher's contract until 2015. And the state program is called RISE, the evaluation program uh, handed down from Dr. Tony Bennett. And uh, I'm sure our administrators through our uh, teachers union, they will uh, work together to make sure it's a fair process for evaluation. Merit pay is a great thing when you're just sitting around drinking coffee, talking about it. Everybody wants to be rewarded for doing excellent work, but who decides who's doing great and who doesn't scares the achievers out of me. And, and I also worry that, I mean, who's, I mean, there's already a lot of pressure on teachers, incredible pressure on teachers. Who's going to want to be a teacher once this whole merit pay and everything? I mean, I, I can't imagine that our best people are going to want to fool with that, and I worry about that. I think after 2015 with the RISE program, uh, one of the components that the school board's going to be challenged with and working on is this compensation package or merit pay or whatever you want to call it. And what form that's going to take and how it's going to be handled. Um, the RISE is highly subjective and it's going to take some time and I think a lot of work. It'll probably change significantly between now and by the time we get to 2015. There's a lot of learning that's yet to be had with that. I mean, they've only been test piloting this in three schools <clears throat> currently, so they're going to have some learning come from, you know, what they've been experiencing so far. So I think it's far from um, from being finalized, but it does sound like that it is going to be mandated. Anything else? Okay. What is your opinion of the voucher system that has been passed by the state? I'll say something. I, I am not opposed to vouchers. You know, a lot of people say that public money should only go to public schools. And I agree that that's true to a certain extent. But I know that there are several parents who feel that their children are falling through the cracks in a public school system. Some children cannot function well in a class size of 25 to 30 and they want to look for a school that will meet the needs of their child. These parents have paid into the <coughs> paid taxes into the state and I truly believe that vouchers can provide you know, a way for those parents to be able to move their child to a parochial school or a private school if it fits the needs of that child. If the children are succeeding well in school and we're providing a good education, which is all what we all want, then I don't think we have to worry about vouchers. The children will come to us. Full disclosure, I am a friend of Tony Bennett. <laughs> I, uh, I was assistant superintendent with him in New Albany, Floyd County. He's my dear friend. But as I told him when he offered me a job, Tony, if I worked for you, one of us would have to die because I do not agree with vouchers. There is only a pot of money this big. That's it. It ain't getting any bigger. In fact, it's getting smaller. And when you start picking from that and taking it away from public education, that's a lose-lose. Now, I do agree with what you said, Alice, about parents should have a choice. We have that now. And that's what some of the things we're seeing with Greater Clark County Schools, and you've heard mentioned here tonight. You can send your child to any public school around. Floyd Central is, is almost at capacity now because of their reputation. But giving money to private schools at the expense of public education will destroy public education. I absolutely agree. I've, I've I've witnessed it, and I'll tell you another thing that I have a big problem with. If you look at state funding per pupil, you look at the top school in the state, and you go all the way down to the last school in the state, and the top 20 are about 12 charter schools. That means they're getting more dollars per student than Greater Clark County schools, and that's not fair. 
Um, that's something we're working on. That's a, another part of our October 9th meeting with the state legislators. We're working on evening that out to where every student gets an equal amount of dollars. But I can tell you right now, Greater Clark gets 5400 a head. The charters in Indianapolis are averaging about $8,000 a head. So I have a big problem with that. I think all children deserve the best public education and all children should be funded fairly. Amen. The thing about vouchers and charter schools is that they're here and, and it's unfortunate that we have to compete sort of with uneven playing fields, but we do. And let's keep working to compete on that. Uh, I think that's the, the best way to go. I mean, they're here. And I don't think they're going to be. That's going to be repealed. I can't imagine. That's going to be if, if we want to make sure it doesn't get expanded, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm not supposed to talk again. <laughs> I suppose if there's one good thing that can be said about vouchers and charter schools is that presents a challenge for public schools to be the best we can be, and be as good as not better. Anyone else? I think in the uh, in the long term we can work on that. I totally uh, disagree with vouchers. But I think in the short term, we have to make sure we have an attractive package to keep our students here, uh, provide them with uh, quality programs at the best price possible, and uh, that's it. No, I agree with, I think it can damage public school greatly. One thing I have an issue with is the count day, because the count day is in September. That's when you get a count day of how many students are in your system. Say Greater Clark has 10,500 students. Well, after that date, any number of students can revert back and come back to Greater Clark, but you don't have any of that money for that school year. That money has gone to whatever school they were in on September, whatever that day was. That is a big issue. I know it's been considered multiple count days, two or three throughout the day, year. That is vital because a lot of kids do transfer, and when they do transfer, we don't get the money, but we get the responsibility, which we gladly accept, but we need that money too. Okay. I think you've answered this next question, however, rather than me make that decision, I'm going to let you. We know how Dr. Dashner's goals were to outsource all support staff at Greater Clark. Can you tell us what your viewpoint is of outsourcing Greater Clark County School support staff? And like I said, I think you've answered it when we talk about the food service, but if there's any other opinions, I'll leave it to you. That's where you trusted your school board to, to make your your wishes be known. The school board heard you when you said you didn't want outsourcing. For the most part, that we brought a superintendent in here who made suggestions. It could be stated that Dr. Mellon may make the same suggestions. You have to count on the seven member board in front of you to make your wishes known and hold the superintendent accountable for, for what we, the community, want him to do. All right, next question. How will you address the growing number of students with disabilities? I'll start off. I, I believe you have to have a quality, uh, special population program uh, staffed by educated people who can evaluate and determine what areas of concern we have and the level of disability of our students place them in the right uh, classes, provide them with quality teachers who's got an educational background, expertise in that department. And uh, if we do that, I think we can uh, handle those kids as well as we possible. I don't think we can either, I don't think we can actually do anything about the growing numbers. That's a, that's a reality. The numbers are growing in our school corporation and every school, school corporation in the United States. Um, more and more students are being uh, identified with learning um, issues. And um, perhaps the, the author of that question meant, what, what are we going to do to provide accommodations for those students? Um, you get extra money for um, a special needs student, depending on their disability. Uh, you get, um, the more severely dis disabled the student is, the more money you get. But that formula needs to be work, looked at very closely because mm -hmm. you may have a student who needs a one-on-one -on -one aid the entire time that they're in your building. They may need somebody to ride the bus with them home. And, um, that, and the other thing is um, the parents of the students need our support too. 
um, the, the programs that we develop must include a parental support piece because um, they're our partners in this and they have to be. I think that question kind of touches on the, the third area of focus and challenge for Greater Clark County Schools and that's student achievement. And whether they're disabled or not, if the, if the numbers of disabled students or special needs students are growing, then we need to add more professionals to address those students and teach those students because every student deserves a chance to learn. And I think now the interest in Greater Clark is growth focus. And uh, so no matter what student it is, and I think probably in the future sometime, probably every student's going to have an IEP. And whether they're disabled, whether they're special needs, or whether they're accelerated, advanced, or, or, or mainstream, uh, every student needs to be evaluated individually. And the greater number of those students that there are, we need to have more and more professionals on staff to handle their issues. And I want to take a stab at this again because these are all pertinent questions. However, the school board in front of you is not running the schools. We brought a superintendent and he brought an administrative team that can answer those questions a whole lot better than anybody standing up here with the exception of Ms. Perkins who's done the job. So forgive me. However, the school board, it, it, those of you sitting in the audience may think we should be running the schools. No, we oversee the superintendent that is running the schools and we are the sounding board for this community as to what will or will not be done on IEPs or, or outsourcing or anything of the sort. I mean, we could take questions all evening and be happy to. However, just so that after four and a half years, I do understand what the job is, as many up here do. We're not to micromanage. That's not our job. I do think, though, that uh, children with um, special needs, children with severe disabilities, are taken care of fairly well by our school system. We have a lot of special ed teachers. But I look at children like my granddaughter who fell through the cracks because she wasn't, she was tested, but she didn't test to be in the special ed program, you know? But she could not handle a class size of 25. She needed a smaller class size and more one-on-one -on -one attention. And I think that's the students that we need to focus on. I mean, these kids, you know, need more help and they need more assistance or we're going to continue to lose them to smaller schools, to homeschooling or whatever or some other place that can fit their needs. The only thing I would add to that is um, we have a 30 plus year veteran who oversees our special, our special education um, department and curriculum and we also have a co-op with West Clark and Clarksville so that as a county we're making the best decisions and, and helping all of our special needs students as, as a collaborative effort. So those are two of the big things that we have going for us is that experienced veteran and that cooperation with our other uh, county school systems. Mm -hmm.